and welcome. My name is Brennan Crotty. I am a director within the AI Applications Business Unit here at IBM. I have overall offering management responsibilities for IBM Maximo. And today I'm going to talk about how our customers can transform their asset maintenance, how they can improve asset performance and reliability, and predict equipment failures with our IBM Maximo application suite. And in particular, during this session, I'll talk about remote monitoring and real-time analytics and how technicians can intervene before problems become unproductive and cause unplanned downtime. So let me start by talking about what's happening in our industry. The underlying solution that our customers are using to manage their asset operations is changing. Maximo Enterprise Asset Management is evolving to make this change and transformation easier for our customers. The benefits are big. We're talking about a 15 to 50% reduction in operating costs, five to 10% improvement in uptime, and up to 15% improvement in asset life. Now, as we talk to many of our customers and partners, we continue to hear about their daily challenges. We hear about the need to decrease their unplanned downtime, to reduce their frequency of maintenance activities and hours. And customers are still seeing a very high percentage of asset failures happening randomly and without the ability to effectively use sensor data coming from their assets. And then finally, they tell us that their experienced technicians are retiring. They have a high turnover among younger technicians, which equates to more training and higher costs. So as we thought about our strategy to help address these challenges, we needed to reimagine operations in this environment. On one side, you have insights coming from sensors detecting anomalies and alerts that drive the remedial actions to your technicians in terms of new work orders for diagnostics or repairs. And then on the other side, you need to enable your technicians with modern AI-enabled mobile applications to help resolve these issues quickly and increase their first time to repair. Then they need data in real time about that specific incident on the asset and have it fed back into the maintenance history. This data can further then be used to inform a health score on the condition and predictability of the asset towards any future asset failures. Now, as we looked at pulling all of this together, we needed to define the path or journey for customers to enable right, a closed loop process, allowing them to extract more value from the shared data across our applications, leading to a preventive maintenance transformation. Now, to enable this journey and transformation for our customers, we've introduced our next generation solution, the IBM Maximo application suite. Now, the suite builds upon our leadership in Maximo and provides a single point of access to a full suite of asset lifecycle management capabilities. This offering is purpose-built to accelerate digital transformation of traditional asset maintenance into an essential, intelligent-based asset management system for resilient operations. Now, our application suite has three core benefits. Integrated suite for easier access, simplified usage based upon concurrent user-based licensing, and multi-cloud deployment flexibility with Red Hat OpenShift. So let's talk about the journey. From a market view, analysts and customers alike tend to look at a spectrum of products, right? Technologies or processes that will solve a particular problem, and they pay particular attention to the end goal. In the case of Journey to Predict, that end goal is simply insight into when a product will fail. A solution that provides the ability to predict can result in tremendous value. Our customers need easier access to a full suite of asset lifecycle applications with flexibility to start at any point in the asset lifecycle and expand into other areas. Now, as our customers use more of these applications, enhanced data sharing across those applications will accelerate their digital transformation, and it allows them to move to condition-based maintenance quickly. Many are using data that they've been collecting for 10, 15 years from SCADA systems. We are delivering new value, leveraging existing infrastructure using artificial intelligence and AI-based anomaly detection. Our strategy is built from EAM or Manage, as you see on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. And then Asset Monitor moves our customers from doing manual inspections on a weekly basis to inspecting seven by 24, 365 days a year. 
Now, if a customer does not have a SCADA system, then Acid Monitor connects to a variety of devices or they can leverage one of our device partners. We, we also have a solution called Maximal Visual Inspection that uses AI and cameras to detect failures. This is a critical feature of the Maximal portfolio and has the ability to inspect critical assets and infrastructure to ensure ongoing and optimized operations, as well as safety and performance. Maximal, Maximal Visual Inspection extends Maximal existing inspection capability and enables users to train highly accurate AI models to classify images and detect objects in images and videos without deep learning expertise. The ability to visually inspect assets and infrastructure with cameras, mobile devices, and drones, and then apply AI to analyze the visual images is really game-changing in industries where assets require frequent inspections, are hard to access, or are in dangerous locations, and where uptime, safety, and performance are critical to business operations, resiliency, and cost management. Now, when we built out our strategy, we focused on how to optimize a customer's workforce and data. And in order to do that, we needed to empower technicians to take timely and effective action, right? Addressing challenges that they see every day. We are delivering the next generation native mobile application platform that integrates capabilities directly from Maximo Asset Management Solutions, providing a single vendor product for improving productivity within the field. We've also launched a first of a kind digital twin exchange marketplace, and that was launched in Q2. It allows manufacturers, OEMs, and third parties um, to share digital resource as digital twins, right? Providers can list and sell asset models, bill of materials or specifications. Consumers are able to find and buy critical content in a single place, and the exchange will target asset intensive industries. We look at the digital twin exchange as a critical connection point for two reasons, right? It connects providers and customers and strengthens those business relationships and opportunities. And then two, customers then can build and manage a complete physical digital asset. Now, as more data and AI capabilities are added, like Monitor, the maintenance approach becomes more proactive. Health allows you to manage the health of your assets by using IoT data from asset sensors and other sources such as weather, asset records, and work history to increase asset availability and improve replacement planning. With PREDICT, it goes beyond time schedule maintenance to condition-based action to predict the likelihood of future failures by applying machine learning and data analytics to reduce asset failures and their costs. It will look for patterns in asset data, usage, and the environment, and correlate those patterns with any known issues to help reliability engineers and maintenance managers predict failures and share data and scoring. Now, I wanna shift gears a little bit and show you a demo. This demo will focus on three personas, the equipment engineer, reliability engineer, and the technician. I'll talk first about IBM Maximum Monitor. So this is targeted at the equipment engineer. It enables them to holistically view operations at enterprise scale to optimize operating performance with fewer, more accurate alerts and giving them greater insights into what is causing the failure. Then I'll show you how our AI powered anomaly detection and configurable dashboards ensures only the right alerts are identified while helping the equipment engineer understand complex relationships between factors causing those failures. Uh, now, this is a shift from threshold-based alarms to AI-based alerts with no data science and send service requests directly into Maximo or another EAM system, ensuring problems are detected and resolved quickly. It'll also bring you through how the reliability engineer can go beyond time scheduled maintenance to condition-based action to predict the likelihood of future failures by applying machine learning and data analytics to reduce acid failures and to also reduce their costs. It will show you the work we've been doing around technician, the advantages of mobility and the application suite, specifically around closed loop monitoring for optimization, allowing an organization to take action based on anomalies and acid health indicators quickly and efficiently, often before the acid fails. This is where smart assets can benefit from the closed loop monitoring capability that is part of the suite. So let's run the demo. 
Here you can see that I've logged into the Maximo application suite and I'm brought directly to my monitor homepage. Here I can get easy access to my pin dashboards, ability to connect and view devices that are connected to the platform, monitor an entity, right, where functions or calculations are run on entity types to create new metrics or alerts. And then I can also connect to external services. But let me click on monitor entities. From this screen, I can see all of my assets that I am monitoring globally. To start, I want to monitor my compressors. So I search for compressor entity types. Click on compressors. I see that I have both summary dashboards that aggregate the data that I want to see in addition to instant dashboards. Both dashboard types are fully customizable with drag and drop widgets. This enables you to create a dashboard that is meaningful to a specific persona base on the type of assets. For summary dashboards, you can even make multiple and aggregate data on an hourly, daily, or monthly basis, depending on what you want to see. Let me click on the summary dashboard. Now, what I'm looking at is the overall status of my operation. Are my assets running, being utilized, and actually doing what they're supposed to be doing? Now, we built this demo for one of the largest oil and gas companies globally. And interestingly enough, we detected a correlation between the utilization and the price of oil. When the price per barrel of oil dropped to negative 30, we saw utilization drop to zero. Pretty cool to see, although not that cool for the customer. Now here I can see a summary of performance in the performance curve. It is clear that my assets are not within the envelope of my performance curve. And I wanna see what assets are causing the problem. I can see in the table up on the right hand side that there's a single asset that has been a problematic for a couple of days. I click the hyperlink, which will bring me to an instant dashboard for that asset. From here, I can see the operational status of this asset along with the key metrics associated with the compressor. The next thing I see is the asset alert table. Now this highlights all of the alerts driven by function added to the asset. Right now, I can see that there are hundreds of alerts from this one asset in just one day. This is not scalable for someone to investigate across the enterprise where you have thousands of assets. The vast majority of these alerts are generated from simple threshold based alarms and are sometimes arbitrarily set and not refined. This results in many false positives to be generated, effectively rendering the alarms meaningless. This is why we are driving the use of AI for anomaly detection. We have several out-of-the-box anomaly detection models that you can use, all of which require no code, no data scientist or developer, just three clicks to apply. We also allow you to either import your own custom models, functions or KPIs and invoke externally containerized models from within the monitor UI. We've made it pretty simple. Now let's see why the anomaly detection models are so helpful. When I filter the table uh, for just high alerts, I decrease the number of alerts from hundreds down to less than 20. This is now something someone can easily investigate. Now I can scroll down to validate whether there was an, an anomaly. I can see very clearly that my asset acted irregularly several times in a short period of time. This is usually indicative of a failure coming. I now wanna be able to create a service request for the technician to take a look at. So I can scroll back up to the alerts table and click Create Service Request. I can choose the Maximo service, the site, and hit Create. All available details will auto-populate into the service request form, even a hyperlink to the specific asset and alert, so that the maintenance manager and technician can easily view the problem. And it can be viewed in Maximo through the life cycle of the request. So now let's take a look at Health and Predict. As more data and AI capabilities are added, the maintenance approach becomes a lot more proactive. Health adds another dimension where multiple assets are viewed within a group, useful life is considered, and health scores can be defined. With PREDICT, insight extends into the future as multiple sources of data from monitor and health are married together in a modeling process powered by artificial intelligence. Here you can see my dashboard for the application suite. These are the applications that I have available to me. I can click on predict 
and it will drop me right into my Health and Predict work queues. These are pre-configured views to help me manage my day-to-day -day activities. In each work queue, I can view the complete list of assets that match the queue or jump right into the first asset to start my analysis. Some of the work queues directly address identifying asset by focusing on poor health scores or predictive failures. Others can help me update asset records so that I have the data necessary to create health scores and prepare my assets for feeding into predictive failure models. This is essentially a way for you to build out the digital twin right, of your asset. I'll select the low health score queue to see my assets with scores in the lowest health range. Now note, the formulas for these health scores are created within the health and predict application. Risk tolerance can vary among industry, asset types, and enterprises. I can define the scoring ranges specific to my tolerance levels. I can also assign my own colors. In the low health work queue, I can also see my assets in poor health. Now, the work queue is sorted to show assets from the lowest health score to the highest. From the work queue, I can select my first asset as I start to manage my workload for the day, investigating and addressing all of the assets with low health score. Now, the health score of an asset is a crucial piece of the puzzle when investigating an asset in poor health. However, other KPIs about the asset can also help me determine what action to take. I can find all the asset information presented on a single page in an easy-to-read table, chart, and graph. On the top of the page, you can see details about my asset and KPIs that give me a snapshot of the current state. There's a breakdown of the health score drivers and factors that give me insight into what's causing its poor health. And the health timeline gives me additional information about the trends and factors. There are also predictive models built to score against incoming sensor data for my asset. Now, PREDICT includes templates to help the data scientists get started building models to predict days of failure, probability of failure, and other common predictions. These templates include a large number of algorithms and can automatically select the one that best fits my data for the optimal outcome. Now, at the bottom of the page is an asset timeline that shows me several pieces of key information about my asset in the same graph. So, for example, I can see that I have a predicted failure here on the top that will occur before my next planned maintenance, which is here on the second line. All of the asset information on this page is complementary and helps me make a data-driven decision on how to address the low health of my asset. So how can I take an action against an asset that's in poor health? Well, at the top of the page, I can select the button to take an action. I can create a service, a work order, recalculate health score, or edit the asset record. In this case, I'll create a work order to schedule preventive maintenance to avoid asset failure and unplanned downtime. Once filled out, I can click Create to send the work order. On the Asset Detail page, I can select that I have addressed the asset, then use the arrow to move to the next items in the queue. The final demo will be focused on Maximo Mobile and the technician. Here you'll see the Navigator panel, which is your entry point to our mobile applications and additional information required to keep your technician productive. Whether you want to see this information as a set of tiles or a list, the Navigator will support that. It contains your key applications like My Schedule for your work orders, inspections, materials and tools, and even the ability to create new work. To support your technician in the job, we have also given you the ability to launch Assist Safety and even access your digital twins. General information like health and support and settings are there for the technician. Settings allow you to deal with light and dark modes of operation, along with other settings that will be relevant to the technician and their mobile experience. And at the bottom of the screen and close to the technician's thumbs are information and actions around connectivity and emergencies. The navigator is configurable. You can determine the capabilities you want for your technician and the order of the tiles. Before I get started, I'm going to switch my experience from dark mode to light. Then click on My Schedule, and you'll see that I've been assigned three work orders, one being a priority one. Now, before I get started, I want to be able to pick up all of the items and tools that I'm going to need for the day. I have an option to view the items and tools needed for each work order, but for now, I'd rather utilize the aggregated list to pick up everything. Once I've done that, I can click Done, and it will bring me back 
to the work order. Now I want to see where my work orders are located so I can optimize my travel for the day. So here I can just click on the location icon. It will bring up the map along with all of my work orders. I click on centrifugal pump vibration and it will bring up the location of where this is located. I can initiate my start travel. And then once completed, it will show me the exact location. Once I finish travel, it will drop me back into the work order details where I can start work. I notice that this pump needs an inspection. So I can decide to perform this inspection before starting the work order. Here I can see a list of steps to follow and complete my inspection on the centrifugal pump. When asked to report an audible change in the pump, I note the sound of rapid tapping and think that this may signify a bent fan blade and is likely the cause of the shaking. This will likely lead to the creation of another work order. After I've finished all the fields, I can hit complete. Now I can return to the work order. From here, there are several things I can do. First, I want to be able to see what is happening with this asset, the context to the asset performance, so I can tap on the gauge icon. Here I can view all the data that is coming from Monitor, another piece of integration that is part of the application suite as a whole. If I tap on Temperature, here I can see individual data points which contribute to the asset's condition. Now after drilling down into the individual data points, I'm ready to begin my work order. I also want to get a holistic view of the asset and all of its parts. So I can click on the digital twin icon. Here I see how all the parts fit together. This will help inform my work going forward. Now I can click on the task icon and I'm easily able to navigate through each step of the workflow. I am taken directly into the step-by-step -step process of the work to be done. However, since this is the first time that I've been doing this, I get stuck on disconnected power step. I can tap on the assist icon and I'm presented with a screen with a variety of manual captures and videos from Maximo associated with the specific step in the process. I can quickly hone in on a video and tap the resource to see more. Now I see previous recorded interaction where a technician, just like myself and an expert, collaborated on this step. In this session, the technician was able to easily remedy his problem because of the back and forth collaboration with the expert through Maximo Mobile Augmented Reality. The expert had added further value to this session by annotating the technician's screen captures so that the future technicians could easily solve the same problem in the future. I complete the disconnect power step. I was able to get all the assistance I needed and help without having to phone in an expert. Now I can return to the work order step. I finish the rest of the step and tap done. I stop work. I see a summary of the work order. I tap complete. Now I'm able to wrap up my work order and I'm ready to begin the next one. So let me bring this back full circle. The business value of the suite is about catching failure sooner and decreasing unplanned downtime. It's about reducing maintenance through labor cost saving. It's about efficiency on repair, getting it right the first time. And finally, it's about safety and productivity of technicians. All of these solutions are being delivered together in what we are calling the Maximo Application Suite run on the IBM cloud powered by OpenShift. It operates with your existing Maximo installation. We delivered a new simplified licensing model where you can purchase user-based seats to the suite with the ability to leverage any of the solutions within the suite. As a whole, we've been maniacally focused on modernization. We've been delivering the next generation offering aligned with our strategy. And we've been focused on integrating capabilities directly into our Maximo asset management solutions, providing a single vendor product. We have reimagined the Maximo Foundation.